Members, members, the right honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 11th of July 2017. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording has been taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. And we also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council further acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Thank you, CEO, members, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Members, ladies and gentlemen of the gallery, welcome to the council meeting of Tuesday the 11th of July 2017, the time is 6.05pm. Members, without further ado, I will take you on to item three on your agenda, which is apologies and leave of absence. We have a full compliment other than Councillor Antic, who is an apology for this meeting. So members, item four on your agendas is confirmation of minutes from our last meeting on the 27th of June 2017. Can I have a mover please? Thank you, Councillor Milani, seconded by Councillor Martin. Any debate members about the minutes? No, we'll move that. Those in favour of adopting, those against, we will adopt the minutes for the 27th of June 2017. Members, item five on your agendas. Uh, we don't have any deputations, but we do have one public forum. and We have Mr. Alan Smith, the uh, director of the uh, State Library of South Australia regarding the Anzac Memorial Arch. Mr. Smith, welcome very, Nice to see you and welcome to Town Hall and um, we can afford you a five minute speaking time with handouts and uh, the members may then elect to ask you questions. Welcome to the Chamber. Thank you very much indeed Lord Mayor. Good evening everyone. I wish to bring for the consideration of Council an idea which I hope may make your concept of a gateway in Adelaide a reality. It's a wonderful piece of serendipity that I had some of my people doing research for me for an exhibition I'm planning at the State Library uh, for 2019 called Coming Home, which is looking at the repatriation of troops after the uh, misters and returning to Adelaide, which we would be running from April through to July in 2019. As part of that research, I came across um, a long lost and almost largely forgotten structure that was a great adornment to the city of Adelaide that was raised by public subscription in January and February of 1919. An absolute spontaneous outpouring from the people of Adelaide that they wanted a significant structure, that the returning troops coming home from the war, and of course, remember, it took a long time to get from Europe in those days. So even though the armistice was declared in November, 
of 1918. It was actually February of the following year before the first troops started to return. It was always thought that the Anzac Arch would become a permanent structure, but a temporary structure was built very, very quickly indeed, so it could be in place for the first returning troops. It was placed adjacent to the railway station, where of course all the troops came from, <laughs> after having uh, disembarked from their ships at Port Adelaide, and it was placed strategically between the railway station and the cheer up hut, which was on the site of the now festival centre, which through the whole course of the Great War, run by volunteers and provided food, comforts and entertainment for returning troops. Therefore, the archway could not possibly be rebuilt in its original site, because that is now the site of the festival theatre. But what I'm proposing for your consideration is that that Anzac arch be recreated as a permanent structure, which was always intended. It was built of timber and steel and plaster, and it lasted until 1925, when the railway commissioners insisted to Adelaide City Council that it be demolished because bits of plaster were falling onto pedestrians and motor vehicles. Um, there was hope that it would be recreated then as a permanent structure, but of course by then you had the Great Depression and then the Second World War, and then it was largely lost. There was a huge public outcry when it was demolished. It had so much meaning for the people of Adelaide. So what you have in front of you is a series of photographs taken from, when you can see it's still an unadorned wooden structure, through to a photograph taken just the week before it was demolished. You can see it actually formed part of a great processional way. And you can see there the procession of His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales on his visit here in 1920. You can see how it looks illuminated at night. What I, and you can also see that I had my staff superimpose it on Kintore Avenue, which just happens to be adjacent to the State Library of South Australia. But more importantly, in this context, it is the site of our National War Memorial and the new Anzac Commemorative Walkway. And what I'm proposing for your consideration is that this recreated arch go just north of the War Memorial, so it doesn't impede in any way the view of the memorial, but straddles Kintour Avenue before the road takes a sharp uh, drop downhill towards the river that would finish that beautiful Anzac Memorial walkway, be a suitable commemoration for the centenary of the ending of the Great War and the bringing of peace, recreate a lost part of South Australia, and more particularly Adelaide's civic history, and bring a thing of beauty back to the streets of Adelaide. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Smith. Please stay with us. We may have some questions from the members. Members, do we have any questions? Councillor Maloney. Thank you. Um, that's fascinating. Um, have you done any further design or costing on this at all? No, not at all. All we have are uh, the photographs in our collection. So for me, this is just an idea that I wanted to share with you all. Thank you. Councillor Corbell. Thank you very much for that presentation. Um, it's intriguing and I think it's a wonderful idea. I'm just interested to know, because we've already done so much work on uh, the commemorative walkway, um, did you not know that this existed while that work was being no, done? So no, be included? no. No, I'm, I'm not, even though I'm an adopted South Australian now, I'm not South Australian born and bred. And so until I saw those photographs, I had no idea it existed. It's not been there since 1925. Uh, Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Um, is it that you are suggesting this should or could be completed by the anniversary of the opening of the first one, 7th of March 1919? Yes, I would have thought that wouldn't be beyond the capability of Adelaide City Council. Thank you. Councillor Clarehan. 
Um, would you see it as a permanent structure or as a structure that would last for a few years to commemorate the return of the Anzacs in 1919? I would prefer to see it as a permanent structure. I think it's a beautiful, elegant structure. It would frame um, the street beautifully. It would also frame beautifully the vista from uh, Gawler Place, which of course the council is just about to spend a great deal of money and effort on. And just a final question. One of the photos says men of the 3rd Light Horse Battalion. Mm. Does that include the 9th Light Horse? Were they incorporated under the, do you know if they were incorporated into no. the 3rd and, and people, Light Horse? And people came back over a year. It took, the DMOB took a very, very long time. So you had different groups returning at different stages as they were demobbed. Mm. Yes, I think my grandfather was one of those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, members. Mr. Smith, thank you very much for your public forum. Thank Great you very much. Thank you very much for giving me the time to address you. Thank you. Members, I will take you directly on to item six on your agendas, which is page three, three of your papers. We have a recommendation to note, approve, and authorise regarding a legislative review committee inquiry into the regulation of parking and traffic movement. Do I have a mover? I do, Councillor Moran. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Deputy Lord Mayor Vershaw. Councillor Moran, would you wish to speak to the matter? I'll do my right. Deputy Lord Mayor. Members to the floor. Councillor Martin, you got a question? It's just a quick question, and it's a uh, North Ward issue. I'm just wondering if the administration could advise me uh, if and when this reconsideration of stops includes the, uh, the city connector bus, because that's a matter of uh, some importance. So, you know. Through Lord Mayor Skip, Peter, to help us with this answer. Uh, through the chair, this uh, legislative review committee won't be looking into the city connector or um, any impact to the city connector. However, if we do go down the lines of reviewing the bus stops, then there may be some impact, but that would need to be taken uh, to council at a later date. Thank you. Councillor Clarion. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I was just wondering whether um, we are aware of um, the motivation of the committee. Is it because of uh, congestion in the city of Adelaide or is it um, an overall concern because of the um, flow of traffic through the city? See you. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor, I understand that this is a metropolitan-wide initiative that is that's an ongoing basis, that it's happened before and will continue to happen. So it's not just specifically to the City of Adelaide, as I understand. I think that's correct. Uh, could, how long ago was it done, do you know, CEO? I'm not aware of it being done for the no. Council before. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor, I might take that on notice and, and provide information back to Council members. Yes. And, and just a, another um, comment too on um, the traffic volumes through North Adelaide doesn't appear to have been um, mentioned and I'm wondering whether given that O'Connell Street for example is the second busiest street or road in our city to West Terrace uh, whether that in itself warrants um, a comment. I know we've made mention of perhaps the need to look at Ra uh, ring routes or alternative um, roads into the ways into the city, but um, I think that uh, O'Connell Street, with about 35,000 cars a day, is humongous, and that certainly needs to be addressed. So I put that for consideration as well. And of course, the issue around um, bus stops. Um, I'm wondering whether um, our Access Committee uh, would get the chance to provide comment on this proposal before it goes in because I'm really concerned um, about older people uh, and those people with disabilities and any reduction in bus stops 
um, would have a huge impact on those groups of people. Thank I'll, you. Thank you, Councillor. I'll take those both as a question. So I will refer those to the CEO. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. Yes, certainly the comments with O'Connell Street, we can incorporate those. And I understand we can certainly put it through our access and inclusion committee. So, yes, to answer. <coughs> thank you, Councillor Clearhand. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, will our accepting of this uh, have any impact or impede our initiative in terms of the parking studies addressing sort of the all day parking from the parking rides? Things like that. See you. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. No, I don't believe it will have any impact at all. Thank you. Councillor Slama. Uh, just a further question of Councillor Wilkinson. Is it, will the Council utilise any smart city technologies um, to inform this report? See you. Through you, Lord I think it would be relevant for us to make reference to that for sure, um, so we can incorporate that into the into the response. And, and on top of that as well, the, the government, the ad inside that, the state government has, very relevance of that information that we can use in this report as well. Is so there a collaboration on that on that side of existing information? Through you, yeah, there may well be potential to do so. We'll take that on notice though, and if it's, if it's possible, we'll incorporate okay. that. So I'm assuming then that the recommendations will come back uh, for voting and for um, um, approval to this chamber? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. Outcomes as a result of this process will be reported back to Council. Thank you, Councillor Slava. <laughs> Councillor Clarion, you have another question? Just one more question. In relation to the volumes of traffic north, south, east and west, given that the city is very much a north-south linear city, does our um, administration have any idea of the different volumes heading north, south versus east, west? And did we recently ask for better coordination of east-west traffic? And the reason I ask those questions is people are commenting on changes to the traffic flow over the last few weeks. And despite the fact that there are school holidays, there just seems to be a huge hold-up in north-south traffic flows. See, so I'll assist you before I hand to you. Um, Councillor, the, I can't answer for the aggregate of the city in terms of bus transport in uh, both directions across the entirety of the city of Adelaide, but of course Grenfell Street is the most heavily uh, frequented street in the city of Adelaide when it comes to buses and it will soon rise to about 26 to 2800 buses a day. So that would certainly add to the east-west volume. See you. That's very good. I'll ask Peter to contribute, thanks. Yes, through the Lord Mayor, we are um, currently reviewing uh, traffic signal operation throughout the city. That includes all northwest, uh, north, south, and east, west traffic flows. This is in partnership with DICTI and the Operating Moving Traffic Program. Um, so we are also basing that on the Add Insight uh, technology, which is Bluetooth based. So determining origin destinations to determine uh, if we can improve, improve traffic flow on the various streets. It is a bit of a trial and error at the moment. Um, so if there are issues, we can address them uh, as they arise. One more question. Just Councilor a quick clarification. Do we know any fraction or proportion of north, south versus east, west, east, west traffic volumes? Uh, we do have uh, information on the number of vehicles travelling on most of our major or all of our major roads and through all of our intersections and we can pull out origin destination information using the Bluetooth data. So we've I'm never worked it out to date? Uh, we have done uh, investigations on certain roads but we haven't done it across the CBD as a whole. Thank you. This might be a good opportunity to do so, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Rani, you were smiling at me earlier. Just being friendly. I was just having a joke, Lord Mayor, because he said uh, Grenfell Street would give rise to 2,800 buses a day. I think we don't actually get some money from the state to fix it, it'll give fall to 2,800 buses a day. <laughs> here, here, Councillor Malay. So <laughs> Members, any further debate? DLM, you reserved your right. Councillor Moran, you reserved your right. You'd like to speak to it. Summed up. Members to the floor, those in favour? Those against? We carry. Thank you, CEO. Yes, sir. 
Members, item 6.2. Before I commence, the CEO has asked whether he can make a brief statement. CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, I'd just like to make a statement in relation to this matter that's before Council. Uh, you'd be aware, prior to commencing with the City of Adelaide, I was the CEO of the City of Prospect. Uh, I just want to state that I don't believe I've got a conflict in this matter, as I haven't had anything to do with uh, working up the development proposal. So, and it happened after I resigned from my role at the CEO, the CEO of the City of Prospect. Um, I just wanted to make it clear um, that that is on the table, um, but I don't believe I had any involvement in the development and so therefore don't have a conflict. Thank you. CEO, thank you for bringing that matter to the attention of the members. Councillor Martin, you've got your hand up. Are you moving as printed? I am. You are? So I can't look for a seconder. Councillor Moran, Councillor Martin, would you like to debate the matter? Um, I'd just like to thank uh, Councillor Malani who brought this uh, to us in 2016 on behalf of uh, Mayor David O'Loughlin in Prospect. Uh, I am particularly pleased to see that the recommendation here has uncoupled or decoupled uh, the matter regarding Blackfriars Primary School, or school at least anyway. Uh, as disappointing as that might be for Mayor O'Loughlin, and I know also for the Chair of Blackfriars and probably the Board as well, but it's a sensible decision. Um, it's now about enhancements to the North Parklands, and uh, I note the administration's uh, endorsement, qualified as it is, at 14 on page 13, saying it needs to be seen in uh, the context of ones already endorsed, including the skate park and uh, uh, the reimagining Rymel. Now, those enhancements, as beneficial as they are to the City Lord Mayor, are all in the Central Ward and this one is in the North Ward. And as a North Ward councillor, let me just say how delighted I am to be endorsing this at this point. It is beneficial to the ratepayers of North Adelaide. So on this occasion, I say we should ignore the administration's advice on 14. And uh, I'd also ask you to ignore the fact that this is completely uncosted because there is $9 million left in the State Parklands Fund, and I think that North Adelaide could use every single dollar of that $9 million to do it in great style. Uh, and I do regret that that won't go to the Central Ward, but that's just one of those things that happens. And uh, I, I don't think anyone should give a thought to the fact that there are two gateways in here, one in the city, even though that's controversial, and there's another one that's not even in the parklands, it's actually in Prospect. But the simple fact is, this is state money, and I am happy to see the state spend money on gateways. And I, I say also, Lord Mayor, um, let's forget that Prospect's not contributing anything to the maintenance costs involved. Um, uh, rightly so, so is Prospect, and so do I. So uh, I say, um, members, uh, I'd appreciate it if you would endorse this, it will hopefully go to the top of the list and be a project that's initiated uh, before the state election. At least we would hope that the state government agrees to hand over the dough for it. Um, look, there's much more I could say about this, uh, Lord Mayor, but um, the words that I have in mind aren't suitable for a public place, but I would just ask members to support this entirely. Thank you. Be disappointed if you didn't advocate vigorously on behalf of your ward. Councillor, well done. It was seconded by Councillor Moran. Um, yes. uh, initially, I was concerned that um, another council was um, doing a takeover of the park lands, and um, this was quickly allayed by the fact that um, no nothing they're asking for isn't in our. Um, uh, land management plan. So really all I see that Prospect's done, and perhaps off to them, is ask, uh, ask us if they can help us unlock some of the money that the government is, um, is keeping for the park plans. And by all means, um, I welcome that, that they can help us get some money from the, uh, uh, for the park plans in the north. Um, that's what council should be doing. I also I completely agree that uh, Prospect shouldn't be putting any money in the park plans. We are the guardians and the custodians of the park plans uh, with all the financial burden that that, that means. The only other person, 
uh, level of government should help us as state or federal. Um, but other councils, um, we secede a lot of power if we start saying you can build this and, I can, and pay for that. So I'm very glad that there's nothing here that's, that's alarming um, and uh, if Prospect wants to help, obviously it's good for them because it's the park lands in adjoining their council area. So I think this is a win-win situation. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Members to the floor, any further debate? Councillor Clarehan. Uh, I just wanted to ask administration um, about the other priorities that we had listed and where this one sat in relation to the other priorities. See you. Uh, through the Mayor, to Nick, thanks. Uh, through the Chair, uh, there are 10, 10 priorities and in broad terms we think this is towards the bottom, so around eight or nine. So in endorsing this, is there some chance that this will gazump the other projects that are higher on our priority list? Oh, we hope and in discussions with the state that have been seen in the context of all the projects that have had support to date. Um, in the context of the broader agenda for enhancement of the parklands and growth around the city. So I think this one will still be seen in the broader context. So are projects. we asking for state funding for the, our other projects that are higher on the list? Uh, we are. We've received um, Capital Works funding for Park 19, which is under construction, Park 25, which is coming to council. And we've got seed funding for Rymel Park and the Skate Park, so there's plenty of work in progress. Terrific. And just one more um, question in relation to uh, maintenance cost to council. Um, we've already um, have an agreement uh, in relation to the development near the North Adelaide Railway Station uh, in accepting state money, but then taking on board the maintenance costs for the parklands. Um, and with this, we would also be taking on the maintenance costs of any um, enhancements? Uh, yes, we would. And is that factored in? Are, are we calculating that along the way or are we waiting to see uh, further costings on the actual details? Yeah, it would rely on further costings. As part of all our capital works projects, we consider maintenance costs as part of the planning process. Okay, thank you. And one, oh, sorry, one final question about the subleasing. I read in the report that um, Blackfriars uh, sublets to 12 other community organisations. Uh, yes, that's correct. And in line with the parklands leasing and licensing policy, subletting is appropriate at, well, with the approval of um, the administration and the delegation. Are we, are we keeping a handle on this in terms of ensuring that our um, head licensee is not making money um, licensing or sub-licensing the parklands facilities to other organisations? I don't have to take on notice, but I understand there's a, a general overview. I think in broad terms too, the you know, multiple community groups using the parklands um, you know, is, is a real positive. I think it was encouraging. I don't have them. any issue with that. Yeah, I the just at the, uh, the revenue the consideration. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have to take it on notice. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Council Clearhand. Members, any further debate? No, I'll go back to Councillor Martin, who is the mover of the motion. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Um, yes, Lord Mayor, just to further endorse uh, this recommendation, it is a win-win for North Adelaide, and I ask my colleagues to support it with enthusiasm. Members, I put item 6.2 for your consideration. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 6.2. Councillor Martin, I've never seen you so enthusiastic. I'd also like to welcome Joe Chapley, the candidate for the uh, state seat of Adelaide to the Chamber. Welcome. Members, I now take you on to item 6.3, which we have a report to note. So, members, do I have a mover to note to move that uh, report? <coughs> Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Councillor Hender. I think hand up quicker. So, Councillor Clarehan, do you wish to speak to the matter? Look, I think this is um, a terrific outcome. Uh, this project to date has been too big to handle 
too big to fund and we've finally got some momentum now. We've got it, we've got it broken down over a couple of financial years uh, and it's also meant that uh, we can deal with the major issue of flooding and water pooling, which has been a major, major issue over the previous years. Uh, I note uh, with um, probably great joy, really, that we've actually managed to get PLEC funding for two thirds of the cost for undergrounding of Jeff Pot Street. And I'm not aware of any other um, PLEC grant that has provided that level of support. 50-50, yes, but I've read that this is two thirds PLEC funding and that's a fantastic outcome. And I, I thank administration um, for the progress on this particular project. Thank you, Councillor Clareham. Councillor Hendy, you seconded? Members to the floor, any debate? Councillor Hender? Councillor Clare Hender, sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, we carry item 6.3, Jeffcott Street, which takes us on to item 6.4. I've got <coughs> Councillor Martin with a hand up. Councillor Martin. Yes, Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to move for a deferral of this item. This is multi-year event licences. You need a seconder for that to proceed. Is there a seconder? I'll hear the um, discussion. You've got a seconder for the... So I'll make this question. If, if we do have conflicts of interest, it means we can't... What, what do we do on, on any of this topic? Thank in you, uh, Councillor Martin. Let me answer that question, please, of Councillor Malani. First, Councillor Malani, we have a move to defer uh, at this point in time. I'll take that debate first depending the outcome of whether it's deferred or not, because it would negate what you're about to discuss. Should we be proceeding, I will do a call over of the items and ask should any members have a uh, declaration of conflict. Yes. So Lord Mayor, shouldn't we um, declare it up front before we even talk about anything on this item, even deferral? Uh, probably not, Councillor, given that it's an item to defer. I'll take advice on that. So even voting against the deferral, for example? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is it procedural? Yes. Well, that does have an impact on all of the... Um, yeah. the Councillor Martin, I've taken advice, so uh, I will proceed with the debate on the deferrals. The so members, please stay in the chamber. Okay. Should the deferral... We'll, we'll see what the outcome of this debate is, and then I will do a call over. Councillor Martin, can I ask you and members in your debate on the proposal to defer, uh, just be mindful of not going into excessive detail about the specific items because that's where you could trigger a conflict of interest with your fellow members. So speak at a, uh, a macro level as opposed to a micro level as to why you're looking to defer, please. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, can I just say at the outset that I am supportive of the concept of uh, multi-year event licences and I don't seek um, to move away from that. I am just asking for a deferral to allow consideration of several aspects of it and I would have it rocketing back into council as quickly as possible. <coughs> My concern relates to several levels. Uh, the first, obviously, is that there's a bit of a controversy about uh, the Adelaide Festival Palais. Uh, and I, I, so, Mayor, I, I think I'd be more comfortable just declaring my, okay. my uh, conflict right now. No, we'll be I know, no, okay. Councillor. We'll just take a hiatus. We, we, you'll still get to debate. You'll still get to debate your motion to defer, members. Now. Do I have any conflicts of interest that would like to be declared in this I chamber? I would like to declare my conflict because I'm on the board of the uh, festival and I just think it's more prudent, prudent to leave now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hinder. Members, any others? Lord Mayor, I'm declaring conflict of interest of 1.11 and 4.2 because I represent the council on one of those boards and on the advisory board of the other. I'm uh, not going to mention those. Lord Mayor, I need to declare a conflict as well. I'm not going to mention that either, Lord Mayor. I chair the Australia Council of South Australia. I can't do this halfway, Councillor, so I need to ask this of all the members. Thank you, Councillor Lani. Yeah, Thank you, yeah, Councillor Abiyad. Uh, Council, sorry, Lord Mayor, just, we, can, we can right now declare a conflict. I can't see you, sir. I can't do this partially, Councillor, so thank you for making your declaration. Are you staying or leaving? 
Oh, You're leaving. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, conflict of interest as um, the uh, uh, having just left as the CEO of the Adelaide Festival Corporation. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. And Lord Mayor, I need to declare a conflict of interest for the Adelaide Festival Centre Trust, as I was a board member once. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Members, the choice to declare a conflict of interest lies with the member. It's an individual choice. The members have chosen. There was no other way procedurally I could do that. I couldn't do it partially. I could either do it. I could either do it wholly. That was the only way I could do it. So we no longer have a quorum. So I leave. Allow me to take procedural advice. <laughs> Okay, so members, we don't have a quorum, which means we can't unfortunately deal with the proposal to defer. So I now need to invite the members back in and we need to look at a different course of action, which will be either to debate the substantive motion or amend it, but not through a deferral because we'll lose our quorum again should the members elect to do the same. Yeah. Look, me. I could take it in parts, Councillor Moran, that's the only way I can do it. Yep. Lord Mayor, look, uh, um, I wasn't aware that the very mention of something, and those were the only words I was going to use in respect of that, that is if it's continuing, it, it doesn't amount to a debate, it is simply an observation. Uh, and I cannot see how exercising the right to declare a conflict is necessary. I understand your frustration, Councillor, but there is um, that the members have their right, that the, the responsibility sits with the individual member to make their declaration. So if they feel that they are going to be exposed in any capacity and they, they do declare and they leave the chamber, this is exactly what happened. But uh, may I just make the point that, that what I seek to do is a reasonable, honourable thing and I am being prevented from moving something reasonable on the basis of a perception that there might be a problem. Uh, and frankly, I wasn't going to mention any event that most of the councillors in this room uh, were associated with. And if I was, it was just the title. Councillor, I was with the Local Government Association last Friday at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre with about 45 other mayors who were all debating the uh, rigour and clumsiness of the current legislation when it comes to conflict of interest. And this is precisely the types of matters that play out. Lord Mayor, is it possible for me uh, to argue for deferral by not mentioning any event and talking about principles? For example, the principle related to guarantees, principles related to uh, other requirements and other stipulations without mentioning a name? Allow me to take advice, Councillor. Just bear with me, please. This is quite unprecedented. So thank you, members, for your patience. Councillor, if I have a solution, um, what I will do is that I will invite the members back in, Councillor Martin. I will then do effectively what is a call over again. So I've got a list in front of me of those items within this recommendation which cause a conflict. I will then have a debate with all members in the room with regards to what I would describe as an on-block process for those balance of items that do not have a conflict. 
you at that point in time can then move your motion to defer which would apply to the bulk of the items which quote unquote are going through in an on lock discussion at least you will either win that debate or you will not win that debate on the merits of your discussions and then we would then of course i would address the balance of the items individually and I'll do an individual vote for those items that had a conflict, which means I'll only be losing one member in each of those debates. That would enable you to achieve in all equity what you're looking to achieve, should the members vote for it. It's the only way I can do it. Okay, look, um, as you choreograph this dance, uh, can I ask you to lead uh, me and everybody else to please? Certainly. Okay, so Ed, if I can please have the members back in the chamber. Okay, members, I'm going to share with you what I'm going to do. I'm going to re I'm going to hit the reset button on this discussion. So what I'm first going to do is that I'm going to ask you to those that had and have a conflict, perceived actual or material, to declare what is your conflict and simply what item number it applies to, because you have a series of recommendations sitting under 6.4. Then what I will do is that I will set those aside and we will have a debate on block, so to speak, for those items which do not have a conflict. So we're setting aside those items which you do. Councillor Martin, I will enable Councillor Martin to have his discussion, which will actually then apply to those items, quote unquote, which we're debating on block, which do not have a uh, conflict, perceived actual material and you will debate the relative merits of a deferral or not. That will be up to your wisdom members whether you, how you vote for that. And pending the outcome of that, I will then work through the balance of the items and when we have a conflict, to which I will need basically a series of votes to put the rest of them through. And when we get to yours, you will leave the chamber. Procedurally members, that's the only way I can do this. So can I please go around the room? Councillor Mulaney, you have a conflict on item which number? 1.11 and 4.2. 1.11 and 4.2, Councillor Mulaney, thank you. So you'll stay in the chamber for now, thank you. Councillor Rabia, you have a conflict? I do, Lord Mayor, in relation to a perceived conflict in relation to item 1.3, Australia Day Council of South Australia. 1.3, Councillor. Thank you. You'll stay in the chamber for now. Thank you. Councillor Hendon. Uh, my conflict is in relation to items one, item 1.1. 1 .1. I think that's all. Yeah. Uh, through the Lord Mayor. Uh, plus 1.15 and 2. So, DLM, are you speaking on behalf of mm -hmm. Councillor Hendon or? Um, just trying to assist Councillor Hendon. Oh, yeah. Thank you. 1.15. Thank you. Okay. And, so, two. and 2. So, Councillor Hender, just so I've got my notes correct here, you are declaring a conflict for 1.1. My apologies. 1.15, and what the third one was? Two. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Now, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, conflict, uh, perceived conflict with 1.1, 1.15, 1 1 and two. And two. Okay, so members, for the PERP, Council of Hereham, my apologies. Lord Mayor, um, as a former member of the board of the Adelaide Festival Centre, um, I would have a conflict with item 4.1 and 1.2. Thank you for bringing that to the attention of your fellow Which members. Which is the Adelaide you? Festival Centre's Ausasia Festival. Uh, and of course the use of the Elder Park for a, ha a Moon Lantern Festival. Okay. Um, Thank you, Councillor Clearhand. Councillor Moran. Um, I also am a former member of the Festival Centre Trust, but I do not believe I have a conflict. Thank you, Councillor Moran, for stating. Now, so members, I'm just got, I have Judy to my right. What I'm going to do for the purpose of this debate, and I will defer to the CEO in a minute, 
is that we are going to temporarily, quote unquote, for the purposes of this debate, set aside items 1.11, 4.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, 1.66, 1.67, 1.68, 1.69, 1.70, 1.71, 1.72, 1.73, 1.74, 1.75, 1.76, 1.77, 1.78, 1.79, 1.80, 1.81, 1.82, 1.83, 1.84, 1.85, 1.86, 1.87, 1.88, 1.89, 1.90, 1.91, 1.92, 1.93, 1.94, 1.95, 1.96, 1.97, 1.98, 1.99, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31, 1.32, 1.33, 1.34, 1.35, 1.36, 1.37, 1.38, 1.39, 1.40, 1.41, 1.42, 1.43, 1.44, 1.45, 1.46, 1.47, 1.48, 1.49, 1.50, 1.51, 1.52, 1.53, 1.54, 1.55, 1.56, 1.57, 1.58, 1.59, 1.60, 1.61, 1.62, 1
the document at page 32 contemplates handing to the CEO approval for any minor changes in events, uh, in event dates, concepts, footprint, and trading hours. Um, it also contemplates in the next paragraph 59, uh, substantial changes to these conditions will be brought to council. Now, I'm asking for qualification because there is no definition of what represents a minor change or a substantial change. Uh, if it was for trading hours, for example, uh, would a change between 1 p.m. Uh, to a 12.30 p.m. start constitute a minor change? Uh, would a change from midnight to 1 p.m. constitute a minor change? Or would it be a substantial change? That needs clarity. Uh, additionally, um, there is a, a matter that, uh, uh, no, I better not mention that. Um, additionally, I think uh, the document would benefit from a more consistent approach. I'm sorry, Lord Mayor, may I just have a moment longer? Members, two, two further minutes, your fellow elected member, got general comfort. I'm seeing Thank you, Lord Mayor. I will. You've got majority. Thank you. Um, th there is no uniformity in the attachment uh, concerning the conditions that would, would apply to events in terms of such basic things as noise mitigation. And I think we have uh, a right to ask for some comfort in terms of a policy direction covering uh, all of those issues. Now, it has been put to me that perhaps we might, in respect of uh, events about which we might have some concern, and I'm talking generically here, Lord Mayor, uh, we might at some stage uh, alter the Adelaide Parklands Event Management History, which is coming to us as a report in the next few weeks as a means of imposing conditions on particular events generically. Now, I, I would prefer to see that document first before I was making policy decisions in regard to um, the multi-year event licences. Um, in summary, Lord Mayor, I, I, I simply ask for clarification about these issues, the opportunity to receive from uh, the administration uh, guidance and uh, the opportunity to ask a series of questions that would inform then the document that comes to Council. Uh, in an ideal world, it would be great if this could come to committee next week and then rocketing back into Council uh, for the next meeting. Uh, in that circumstance, I'd be hopeful from my reading of the documents that there won't be too much inconvenience caused, apart from to the administration, and I apologise for that, um, but there won't be too much inconvenience caused to the event schedule. So I would just ask members to support uh, a more fulsome discussion about the principles that are enshrined in the document. Councillor Martin, thank you very much. Councillor Claire Hand, you seconded the motion to defer. Would you wish to speak to it? Lord Mayor, um, when I read through this report, I, I had two major concerns, or they're not major, but two concerns. One was in relation to um, the multi-year licence agreements and the delegation to the CEO in relation to what constitutes minor changes versus what is a significant change. And again, um, I thought about the hours of operation and, for example, an event on Pinky Flat and the impact, or dare I say, Adelaide Oval number two, uh, and, the, and the issues that would create in terms of noise mitigation. Um, so I certainly would like some clarification on that, um, whether that actually um, requires a Deferral. Um, I'm are quite happy to hear from the CEO. Councillor Kaiser, are you asking a question of administration or are you supporting a motion to defer? Well, I'm basically saying that I'd, I'd like to um, hear from the administration. CEO. Um, through the presiding member, we do have a policy already in place that prescribes operating hours of each parkland space 
um, and we've had that in situ now for over a year. Um, we did commit to council when council endorsed that policy that we would monitor that for the first year and bring any proposed revisions back to APLA and council in due course. Um, that annual review um, has uh, been underway and will be considered by APLA um, next week um, and then uh, will be considered by council. Each of those parks um, has operating hours and the proposal that we're putting forward tonight is that um, each of these um, licenses already meets the existing um, hours and foot, um, you know, footprints for all those parkland spaces as previously endorsed by council. In terms of the definition regarding minor and significant, um, council will see in the report that um, you know, for example, uh, when we talk to a change in event dates, including bump in and bump out, sometimes there's adverse weather conditions um, and event organisers ask us for an additional day to bump in or bump out. We would consider that minor and would wish to be um, doing that under delegation through the CEO on a NASNIS basis. When we talk about significant, what we're intending there is where the event concept change, changes quite dramatically or where the footprint or location changes dramatically or where there's any significant breaches to the existing Parklands events policy where we think um, you know, there would be appropriate um, decision required by council to enable that policy to be breached. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. Councillor Hendon. Okay, Lord Mayor, some, I think some of my questions have already been answered, but really I was just going to ask an admin comment on the matters raised by Councillor, um, by Councillor Martin. Now, you've already addressed the matter of minor and significant. You've addressed the matters of relating to opening hours and footprints, etc. Um, I didn't make a note of all the, the, the issues that Councillor Martin uh, raised. I know you raised the issue of noise and some other things. I wonder if you could give us some comments on those as well. See you. Thanks. Through the presiding member, we do have a noise mitigation and standard operating procedures that Council's had in place for uh, quite some time. Um, significant events um, and large events that occur over a period of time are required to undertake um, noise monitoring and there are repercussions that Council has previously endorsed. Um, such as loss of bond uh, for those events where um, we anticipate there will be a noise emission. So there is no proposal at this point to um, not continue with the existing approach in relation to noise in parklands. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, would uh, the um, granting of five-year licences lock in the existing fees and charges payable and bind future councils to the current or, or the future, like it's going beyond this, this political term and is actually longer than a council term. So my concern is about future councils being basically um, not enabled to revisit fees and charges or terms of some of these leases. CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, fees and charges are considered by Council on an annual basis, so they wouldn't be, yeah, wouldn't be implicated in this process. So, Members, you are debating a motion to defer. Is there any further debate before you hand you back to the mover? Councillor Abbey, the floor is yours. Lord Mayor, thank you. Look, um, I understand the concerns that some of the councillors are bringing up um, to the attention of the administration, but we have the Adelaide Parklands Events Management Plan and I would implore councillors to pull that apart and put it together as a policy document in relation to what they would like to see in the parklands before people apply for those spaces. Because that document is our policy document. It's online, it's available, it's clear. So when people are applying, they know what they're applying for. We were stuck in the same circumstance not too long ago when people that were applying were unsure how far did the envelope extend? So we made it clear on what parts of what parklands they can do, what and where, and on those bases they've applied. Now we are trying to change some of the rules again. And look, I'm all open for that. And when Councillor Martin's asking for a deferral, I think what we should do is take the Adelaide Parklands Events Management Plan back to a workshop, pull it apart, re-decide what we would like to put in there, and put it back together. 
That's the discussion. Short of that, he should resign from this seat and hopefully be employed by administration to try to sit down and, and fix every nitty, little nitty-gritty that he thinks he can fix within specific events. It's not a matter for us, Lord Mayor, to sit here and micromanage a very expensive administration that have got the brains and the power. Either we trust them with a document and we say to them, here you go, you can go and do this work on our behalf. You know what our strategy is, and our strategy is to activate the city, bring more people, improve tourism, better greening, noise mitigation. That's the, that's the top level discussion. And we leave it to our very capable professionals within the administration to interpret that and work with the CEO to deliver on some of those. Granted, there will be some occasions where things might not go how councillors may want them to go, and that can come back to council. We can manage some of those issues. But look, Lord Mayor, I think it's important we move on. We've got a lot on tonight. Uh, I think this deferral will fail, and it's important that it fails because we need to give certainty to these event organisers. They've got credibility, and like all those events, I'm not going to talk specifically, but you know. All those events listed have already got a tested past in events in the city of Adelaide. They've delivered good results for our strategic plan, good people, good numbers. They've engaged the community, they've worked with our administration, and they have a better relationship with admin than they do with us. So look, I would implore councillors to not waste any further time. And for us, if we want to look further at this, let's look at our events parklands strategy document and try to set up the boundaries for next time or the year after to what we expect people to apply for for the fifth time. Uh, that's that's what needs to happen. So I'd ask uh, councillors to not support the deferral and we can please move on and deal with other items. Lord Mayor. Thank you Councillor Abiyad. Members, do I have any further debate? I don't. I'm going to move you back to the mover of the uh, proposal to defer. <coughs> Councillor Martin, floor is yours to sum up. Thanks uh, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I want to assure Councillor Abiyad that I have no intention of uh, resigning as a elected representative of the people of North Adelaide. Uh, and people of Adelaide. I, I have uh, no intention of uh, joining uh, the administration. But I am here as a representative of the people who live in North Adelaide people who are impacted by events in the city. Now, that's not a concern for Councillor Abbott, who doesn't live in the city of Adelaide. But for people like me who do... I live I'm in the city of Adelaide, Lord Mayor. I just don't sleep here, but I live here. I'm here 18 hours a day. Oh, that's, that's sensational. Where are you the other six hours, if I ask Councillor Abbott? Councillor? Lord Mayor, uh, it is a very real concern that uh, residents have that these uh, uh, events are managed well. And fundamental to that is the terms and conditions around them. Now, I make clear to members here that uh, these documents that you're approving, and there is an attachment to this, 6.4, which approves each and every event. The criteria attached to each of those events varies, and there is no explanation as to why. In some cases, it says, event managers or event organisers will ensure there's noise mitigation. In others, there is no mention of noise mitigation. Now, I'm asking for some clarity about why that's not the case. I thought Councillor Abiyad uh, might be disturbed by the suggestion that uh, uh, we would, in some cases, be delegating to the CEO the authority to approve or decline an event. And on the basis of the shareholding of the company. Now, we do that nowhere else in this organisation. I do not understand why that's an acceptable principle, but if you agree to this, you will be agreeing to that. And secondly, in respect of his comments about the Adelaide Parklands uh, uh, plan, the, uh, in, uh, the events uh, management plan, uh, that document has run its course. It is one year old and there is a report to come back to us which will make observations about the way in which the policy has worked. Now, it seems to me that it would be a better thing for us to do to see that and then make a decision about the attachments on Members, the you have a fellow member summing up. Can you please do your fellow member the courtesy? Yeah, Councillor Martin? Summing up on a debate on a deferral, but we're summing up on something else. It's still the debate, Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin, floor is yours. Sure, I'm so, uh, sorry, I was your first comment, Lord Mayor. I agree with chat. I'm asking the members to focus. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I refuse to focus. 
<laughs> Members, please. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Uh, Lord Mayor, I just want to assure Councillor Moran that I will extend to her the same courtesy or discourtesy as appropriate. But the matter, the matter for the elected membership to consider is, is it appropriate to be creating these conditions for multi-year event licences, no matter how good the principle of multi-year event licences uh, is, if there is something that can be fixed by a simple discussion. Now, I understand uh, Councillor Abiad's uh, irritation by detail, but it is important, and particularly to the ratepayers that I represent. Members, please. You are voting on a motion to defer. Those in favour? Those against? The motion fails. Now, members, procedurally I'm just going to provide you some advice to inform your options that you have before you now so that we don't end up in the same convoluted position we are in 10 minutes ago. Members, I could have a mover, move a motion and exclude the aforementioned items. So effectively, members, we could do this in parts. Lord Mayor, I'm happy to move them all except for the two that I have a conflict in. No, members, I'll, I'll just reiterate. Um, members, I can do this in parts and I can walk you through this fa fairly all expeditiously. The, the non-conflicted items, I could have someone move that, should you wish, and you can debate that on its merits, and then I will cycle through each of those impacted items and the individual member will leave the room during that debate. So, members, what do I have? You are? I'm happy to move all except for the ones, the except the ones that we've noted before. Okay, thank you. I'll accept that. Do I have a seconder? I've got the DLM. So, Councillor Mulani, do you wish to debate? I reserve my right, Lord Mayor. DLM? Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I do believe that um, most of the questions that Councillor Martin has raised uh, have either been answered or can be answered in the Chamber as we debate this paper. I'd also like to um, thank administration for uh, the work that went into the five-year multi, uh, five-year multi-year event licences uh, for these organisations, having uh, been part and worked alongside many of them. This is a real game changer uh, for the events in the city. Uh, they will have certainty whether they're coming in. Uh, previously, they might not know until October for an event that's in January. Um, and to have that long-term certainty is absolutely imperative for these events if we're going to grow uh, our cultural offering in the city. Um, it also allows them to have certainty to get sponsorship, um, hire their staff, you know, bring in people longer term and do, you know, proper strategic planning as opposed to second guessing what's going to happen. From um, the council point of view, it also allows us to do long term planning in terms of remediation and working with with each of these organisations to make sure that uh, they work within our, our existing strategy and policy frameworks. Um, uh, I, I, I do support some of the questions uh, that have actually been asked and answered um, and uh, I thank the administration for that and there are probably a few more questions that will come through the chamber. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor, thank you. Members, Councillor Mani, you reserved your right. Would you wish to speak now? Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I, um, I echo the sentiments of, of Councillor Deputy Lord Mayor. I also wanted to acknowledge the work that's been done on this by the administration because it has been a very robust, comprehensive um, piece of work that I think actually is quite sort of leading the way in terms of how we do manage events in our city. Um, so I think that needs to be just um, acknowledged that this is a deep dive. All the um, work that we've done in policies around events in the parklands have all really accumulated now to a position where we can actually give some certainty. And I think that's what um, this piece of work is, is doing, so I wanted to acknowledge that. Um, and I'm also going to take this opportunity to say to Councillor Martin that it always makes me nervous when an elected member stands up here and says that they only represent one part of the city for, for their ward when they're making decisions on all parts of the city. And I think that should be very much considered and be careful and, and he should consider when he says that what he actually means by that. That's what I mean. 
So members, do I have any further debate? I don't see any hands, so we are now debating the non-conflicted items. Councillor Marnie, you're summing up. So members, I put this motion to you for your vote. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Thank you, members. So members, what I'm now going to do is that uh, Judy has very kindly grouped these matters for me. I'm now going to deal with the conflicted items and you will be debating the conflict item with the bulk of the substantive motion attached to it, like what you just voted on for the non-conflicted items. So, um, Councillor Hender and DLM, uh, you pulled out items, you noted items 1.1 and 1.15 and item 2. Could you just please declare your conflict again? I'm on the board of the festival. Thank you, Councillor Hender. DLM? Um, I was the CAO at the time that these applications came into council. Okay. So, members, thank you very much. So, members, I will shortly look for a mover for items 1.1, 1.15 and item 2. Councillor Clarehan moved by Councillor Milani. Councillor Clarehan, do you wish to debate? Uh, just very quickly, Lord Mayor, I didn't speak before, but I don't think there's any question of us supporting or not supporting these events in the city. They are absolutely crucial um, to the vitality of the city and to fulfil our strategic plan, both at the local government level, Adelaide City Council level and state level. Uh, they are what gives Rep Adelaide the reputation as it being a, a vibrant, innovative, creative city. Um, and, but I think there are some concerns expressed when the reports for each of the events mention different things. Some of them mention needing to comply with noise mit mitigation policies and others don't. Uh, and when we know that there's been some complaints made about um, some of the events, well, it raises alarm bells purely and simply thus. But in general, the, the support is unequivocal and they have my total support. Thank you, Councillor Clare. The CEO wish to make a couple, couple of comments. Not through, well, just a, some clarity, I guess, is that concern? Through the Lord Mayor. Um, the Adelaide Parklands Management Plan, um, as Claire mentioned previously, stipulates the requirements for each parkland site um, and the event management approaches contained within the report are specifically aligned with the requirements with the, uh, the Adelaide Parklands Event Management Plan. In relation to the noise, each event is assessed against our noise um, mitigation standard operating procedures, which are very prescriptive around events that require noise management and ones that don't. Can I just Further question? Yes, you can. I just think when you compare the Glendy Festival in Victoria Park with uh, the Garden of Unearthly Delights and Gluttony in Rymel Park, and there are statements about noise mitigation policy, but you don't include the feast event on Pinky Flat, which is also adjacent to residential areas, well then that creates a level of uncertainty. I'm sure there is a consistency, we just didn't mention it for all of them. Thank you very much, Councillor Clarehan. I think we'll take that as a comment. Thank you very much. Um, now I've got, Councillor Mulaney, do you wish to speak to this? Councillor Martin? Yes, look, Lord Mayor, uh, can I just reiterate that I endorse entirely the concept of multi-year event licences and I support each of the events. I was, as Councillor Clarehan says, seeking some certainty in, to, in regard to the conditions that apply to some of those events. And I hear the administration, I do understand. However, the fact that there is no mention of noise mitigation in regard to Pinky Flat is a matter of great uh, concern in North Adelaide. And I know Councillor Milani has dismissed that any of these events are in North Adelaide, but the truth is events which occur around the riverbank have a serious and substantial impact on the ratepayers of North Adelaide. Therefore, it would be best if we had some clear statement of intent related to, for example, Feast, which when it was uh, staged in Light Square, according to the public consultation, which is not included in any of these documents, according to the public consultation, was the subject of noise complaints. It is now moving to Pinky Flat, and there is no mention of any measure to address the noise problems associated with that, even an assurance that it won't be a problem. That is all I have sought to do. 
as well as to establish uh, some clear guidelines related to the, uh, the delegation that's being handed to the administration on our behalf. Uh, however, there is no question I will support each of these events as and when they're proposed. Thank you, Councillor. Members, Councillor Aviad. No, no, just quickly, I've just noticed the screen dropped, but there was a highlight. Okay, so I just wanted to, we're dealing with item 1.1, 1.15 and 2. That is correct. So that would include also the um, granting of the Adelaide Festival Corporation landlord consent for two years to use the riverbank and the proposed management approach. So that's the floating pallet, is that correct, Lord Mayor? Am I reading this right? No, I don't think you are. That is item two, which is subsets item 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. Can I get administration comment on that, please, CEO? Yeah, because I'm, yeah, if you're referring to 1.1, 1.15, and 2, then that too is included as well. Very much, so, thanks. Uh, through the presiding member, um, paragraph two does. Um, will be proposing that Council grants the Adelaide Festival Corporation consent for a two year period um, for the floating palais for the period of the festival. Um, paragraph 32 in the report explains that um, the request for the pontoon to remain in situ outside of the festival period is subject to a separate consideration by APRA and Council next week. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. So, members, do I have any further debate regarding item 6.4, subsets 1.1, 1.15, and 2? I don't, so I'm going to put you back to your mover, who is Councillor Cleohan, who's summed up. I put this for the vote. Those in favour, members? Those against? We carry. If we could please invite the councillors back into the chamber. Thank you. Welcome back, members. Members, I will now address items 1.2 and 4.1, which I understand that Councillor Clarahan may have declared. Is that correct, Councillor Clarahan? Yes, Lord Mayor. Would you like to restate your conflict, please, Councillor? Yes. Um, I was a member of the board of the Adelaide Festival Centre Trust, uh, and when these applications were being uh, determined by uh, the festival's administration and ours, I was a member of the board. So Thank you for bringing that to your attention to your fellow members, Councillor. Now, members, I'll look for a motion from the floor from Councillor Corbell, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor for items 1.2 and 4.1 as subsets, of course, of item 6.4 of this motion. So, Councillor Corbell. I reserve my right. Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, do I have any debate? Councillor Corbell. Those in favour, members? Those against, we carry. If we could please invite Councillor Claire Hamm back into the chamber. Welcome back, Councillor. Members, I'll now address item 1.3 as a subset of item 6.4. Councillor Aviard, declaring. I'll just declare a conflict on item 1.3, Australia Council of South Australia. I chair the organisation. Thank you for making the declaration to your fellow members, Councillor. Members, I have a mover in Councillor Mulaney, a seconder in Councillor Corbell. Councillor Mulaney, any debate? Councillor Corbell, any debate? Members, any debate? Councillor Mulaney, summing up. Summed up, members, those in favour? Those against, we carry, which includes item 1.3. Ed, thank you. Welcome back, Councillor. Members, we now address item 1.11 and item 4.2, which I understand Councillor Milani declared a conflict for, Councillor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, in, uh, I am a board member representing this council on the Horse Trials Management um, Incorporated, and I am an advisory um, panel member to the Motorsport Festival. Thank you for making your declaration to your fellow members. Members, can I have a mover from the floor? Councillor Corbell, seconded by Councillor Clarahan. Councillor Corbell, do you wish to debate? Councillor Clarahan, members, any debate? Councillor Corbell, summing up. 
Members to the floor, those in favour? Those against? We carry, if we can invite Councillor Maloney back into the chamber. Members, thank you for bearing with me. That was uh, somewhat unprecedented. Candidate for the seat of Adelaide would see the conflict of interest provisions at work. <laughs> Members, I take you now on to item 6.5 in your agendas, which is uh, City of Adelaide Audit Committee proxy membership. I need a motion to amend members, which is using Regulation 21, which is not unprecedented, uh, to effectively um, rearrange how proxies are treated. So I don't amend. I've got a mo mover with Councillor Martin, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Martin, do you wish to debate? No, Lord Mayor, just to observe that this is a fairly straightforward, simple measure, and it will make the operation of the Audit Committee much smoother and more effective. DLM. Members, any debate? <coughs> Councillor Martin, summing up. Summed up. Members to the floor, those in favour? Those against? We carry item 6.5, which takes us directly on to item 6.6, .6, Audit Committee Extension of Term of Appointment of Independent Members to approve. Can I have a move, please, Members? Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Clarehan, do you wish to speak to the matter? Summed up, Lord Councillor Moran? <laughs> You're racing ahead, Councillor. I summed up. I <laughs> I lost her. Unanimous agreement there. <laughs> Members, do I have any debate? <laughs> you wish to sum up now, Councillor? Sum up, Lord. So, Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We now carry item 6.6, .6, which takes us on to item 6.7, dog, dog and Cat Management Delegations, page 67. Do I have a member from the, do I have a move from the floor? I do, Councillor Malani, seconded by Councillor Hender. Councillor Malani, do you wish to speak to the matter? No, Councillor Hender. Members. Councillor Malani, back to you. No. Members to the floor. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 6.7. Members of urgent key risks, of which we have nil. That's always good news, CEO. And that takes us on to item 7, which is a question on notice from Councillor Slama. Councillor Slama, do you wish to read your question to your fellow elected members or take it as read? Um, <laughs> for the benefit of those in the gallery, I'll read it. Certainly, oh. Councillor, that is your right. You may read it. Shouldn't say um, The Council asked that Council Administration distribute to members a copy of the letter, letter recently received by the Lord Mayor um, from Minister Stephen Mulligan MP regarding the parking of motor scooters and motorcycles on designated footpaths throughout the City of Adelaide. Given that the Minister has now confirmed in writing that no legislative, no legislative changes are required to validate the permanency of these arrangements, can administration please confirm with the members that the current sites have moved beyond the trial phase and that the parking of motor scooters and cycles in the current designated areas is now permanent? Two, given the popularity of these initiatives and the benefits it, the benefit it delivers in reducing motor vehicle congestion, can administration further advise the members as to what action has been taken to expand the number of designated sites throughout the City of Adelaide? In doing so, can administration also please advise the members as to how many additional sites have been considered and the time frame for their implementation? Thank you, Councillor Slama. I have a relatively brief answer, Councillor Slama. Would you like to take it as read or would you like the Lord Mayor to read it? Please read it. Certainly. I have received a letter advising that there is no legal impediment to expanding the ability for motorcycles to park on footpaths, but noting that motorcycle parking on footpaths remains a non-standard practice in South Australia, requiring approval from the Department of Planning, Transport and Infrastructure. That said letter I've received from the Minister. Consultation has been recently undertaken on three new locations, in addition to the existing eight locations. This includes two locations on the east side of Light Square and one location on North Terrace, west of Morford Street. These three locations all receive negative feedback from businesses citing noise, pollution and impacts to pedestrian movements and will not be implemented at this stage. However, as a result of the success of the existing eight locations, which are now permanent, 
Further motorcycle parking on footpaths locations will be explored on an annual basis. $10,000 has been allocated in the 2017-18 Smart Move Interim Action Plan to implement further motorcycle and scooter parking locations on footpaths, noting footpath width, constraints and competing demands for space. Thank you for your question on notice. Councillor. Members, do I have any questions without notice? I don't. I do. Yes, you, you do, Martin. Lord Mayor. I just wish to flag that I have two questions to ask without notice. However, they are matters which I believe should be dealt with in confidence, and I would therefore flag that I would ask, I will be asking those questions in the latter part of the meeting. Councillor, in order to do so, I will need a indication of at least the topic matter and the reason for confidentiality for each. For each. Can you please share with your fellow members? Um, well, Lord Mayor, I'm prepared to say that it, it is a matter uh, that is commercial in confidence and it has the uh, potential to impact on possible negotiations. Okay. Thank you. I'll accept that, Councillor. Do you have another question without notice you wish? No, no just the one. All right. I'll deal with that, Councillor, in confidential matters. Members, uh, we now have a motion on notice, item 9.1 from Councillor Martin, uh, regarding the annual report inclusion, page 78 of your papers. Councillor, the floor is yours, and I'll look for a seconder. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I need a seconder before I speak. Councillor Wilkinson's your seconder. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Um, uh, members, this uh, uh, motion on notice is aimed at providing uh, openness and transparency for our ratepayers. Uh, um, a principle I know that both the Lord Mayor and the CEO have said many times uh, that uh, they are committed to. It would allow all of our ratepayers uh, to see important information about uh, for the first time, how many staff we employ and in the categories employed uh, by council. Now, what I'm asking for is not unusual. Uh, it is common in other cities to do likewise. And Lord Mayor, uh, I have to share with you that I have been uh, inspecting the website of the City of Melbourne, uh, which has not only the details, but it has bar charts, pie charts, graphs. It's sensational. It breaks down classes of employment uh, between permanent full-time, uh, permanent part-time. It talks also about the number of casual employees. And then it goes to break down the categories, uh, further categories of employment. Uh, and incredibly, it also, and we've never done this, breaks down the staff numbers into gender. So you can actually see how many men, how many women are employed by the Melbourne City Council. Now, that is the kind of transparency that I'd like to see us engage in. Uh, and to provide that information in our annual report would seem to me to be the best vehicle. And separately, I think there's an enormous advantage to be had for council in being able to say to our ratepayers, look, this number of people are engaged every day in keeping the streets clean. This number of people are working permanently in the parklands on the maintenance of the parklands or so many people are involved in emergency roadworks, uh, keeping our streets usable at all times of the day and night. It, it is a positive initiative uh, and one which I think would be welcomed by our ratepayers. I invite uh, councillors to inspect the City of Melbourne site. It is well worth a look and if we can replicate a part of that uh, in time for the 2016-17 uh, um, financial report or even the following year, that would be sensational. Councillor Martin, Councillor Wilkinson, you seconded. Do you wish to speak to the matter? Uh, no, but I support the openness and transparency uh, agenda. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hinder. Lord Mayor, I rise to speak in support of uh, Councillor Martin's very sensible suggestion and to indicate, as I did earlier, that I need to leave the chamber at 7.30 as I have another appointment. Nothing Thank personal, Councillor Martin. Good idea. No, no, you had my vote, I was still in the room. Thank you, Councillor. Members, any further debate? Members, before I hand you back to the mover, I too support this motion. Councillor Martin. Members, those in favour? Those against? We carry. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, I now take you to the exclusions to the public. So we now have item 12.1.1. My mistake. Well done, Judy. Mem members, do I have any motions without notice? Item 10 on your papers. 
I don't. Anyway, Judy, I was quite visionary. <laughs> <laughs> members, I will move to exclude to the public, which means, members, I uh, have two items, which will be item 12.1.1 and a late inclusion of item 12.1.2, which will then become a question without notice, which Councillor Martin will ask in private. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you are, can I have a mover to move into public? Into confidence? Yeah. Can't move into public. <laughs> Councillor Milani, seconded by. Councillor Aviad, I think you had your hand up, sir? I did. You did? Those in favour? Those against? We move those two items into confidence. Ladies and gentlemen of the gallery, if you are not central to this item. Thank you, members. It's been a long day. I need to do it separately for the second item in confidence, which of course is the question without notice in confidence. Moved by Councillor Maloney, seconded by Councillor Clarahan. All in favour? Those against, we carry. So we now have two items in confidence. Thank you very much, Judy.
Members, the time is 7.37 p.m. I formally declare the meeting closed. I thank you for your participation. See you next time.